on this episode. Oh, is that sore, is it? Do you feel like you're going to vomit? Archie is in serious trouble and Kate must act quickly to save his life. I look at the screen and my heart just drops. If something is stuck in that intestine, it's death. And his little toesies. Oh, oh. Tiny George has had a nasty fall. The last thing you need is a broken leg, George. Poor little fella. How magical is he? Oh my God. And an unusual orphan needs help from Scott. Oh, he's got an umbilical hernia. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Hi there, Karen. Hello, Karen. Hello, Rachel. At Scott's UK clinic, Karen has arrived with her beloved companion, Lily. How is she doing? She is doing very well. A bit apprehensive, a bit nervous, as yes. always. Yes, she's always very sweet in saying hi to me. Today Lily will have an operation to check out a growth on her bladder to see whether it's benign or malignant and whether it can be removed. There's an Aussie word that I know from home, it's battlers as in like the great Aussie battler. And it means people that are strong and they're brave and they're committed. And that's exactly what both Karen and Lily are, they're battlers. Yeah. Lily is my best friend. She is my confidant. She is the child that I've never had. There. Two years ago, Scott removed a tumour from Lily's mammary tissue. This time it's feared the elderly dog has a suspected growth in her bladder. At the same time, Karen is also undergoing treatment for breast cancer. Shall we throw it for you? Shall we throw it for you? That's a little throw. It's so important to have a reason to get out of bed when, when life deals you a few curveballs. And she's that reason. All right, honey, you're not going home. You're coming with me. Say bye to mommy. Come on, you're going this way. Come, Come on, then. Yeah, okay. I admire Karen so much. She has a heart of pure gold. And here she is diagnosed for a second time with breast cancer in a global pandemic. And now her beloved Lily is facing another scare. It's just heartbreaking. Come on, Hi guys. Uh, Nina and Sam, this is Lily. I think you both know her. Come here, gorgeous. Oh. So it's a nervous day, not only for her, but for her mum, as you know. And now we think there's a big chance that Lily has also got a bladder tumour. We're going to ultrasound the bladder again, just to see how the mass is looking. Uh, X-ray to see if there's any spread of any cancer. And hopefully if there isn't, then we're gonna go in and we're gonna see if we can remove that pesky tumour, aren't we? Yeah. She's so beautiful, isn't she, don't you think? A little tongue, yeah. A little tongue. But as the team begins prepping Lily, Scott makes an alarming discovery. Oh, goodness. I just noticed that. Do you know that's coming from the abdomen? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. At Kate's Bondi Vet Hospital, an anxious Carolyn has arrived with her best mate Archie. It's okay. Archie is usually lively and outgoing, but recently he's been seriously unwell. He's been throwing up for the last few days, so I thought I'd take him down to get him looked at because he's just not himself at all. I mean, he's a dog, but he's like my little child, right? Hello. Hi, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Hey Archie, you've been very sick. Would you like to come in <laughs> so we can talk about you? Like a tummy scratch. You're a good dog. Good boy. Come on, buddy. 
Well done. All right, Arch, so what's been going on? Last night, he was up like probably about four times, like vomiting. And then today, when I was walking him, he was like vomiting. And then I went to acupuncture. For an hour and I came home, he vomited all over the couch. Archie's come in because he's vomiting. Not once, not twice, but a number of times. Vomiting this long a period, multiple times, it's not great. This is unlike him. Very much so, yeah. like he's not like that at yeah. all. Like he's like the life of the party. <laughs> Chances are, if we're lucky, that what we're dealing with is a gastro, yeah. right? So that's our best case scenario. Yeah. But saying that is obviously our worst case scenario is, is that he's eaten something and yeah. it's stuck. Yeah. Are you ready, buddy? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. There you go, matey. Oops, you doops. You got your little feet on? There you go, mate. So he is quite dehydrated. Yeah. You can see in his gums, like these gums are, are what we call quite tacky, you know, like they're just not that wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His heart rate's a bit high. Mm. We're suggesting he's got pain somewhere. Yeah. Oh, is that sore, is it? Do you feel like you're going to vomit? Are you okay? Oh, Archie. He's quite sore in this tummy. Yeah. And the more I press on it, the more nauseous he gets. There's a few things that are really concerning here. He's got abdominal pain, he's really lethargic, he's vomiting multiple times, and he's also got a fast heart rate, which means that he's painful somewhere. Kate will need to carry out urgent tests to find out exactly what's wrong with Archie. Good boy. George. On the Gold Coast, seven-week-old kitten George has been rushed into Gerardo after his alarmed owners heard him screaming out in pain. George, oh, you oh, that little meow meow. Hey, mate. Oh, wow. George is tiny. He's so cute. Look at those eyes. Shannon and Michael are desperately worried about their precious new little boy. George was playing with the dog about five seconds outside. I, he was just started screaming. He couldn't put any weight on his leg, so I was just sort of hoping it was a bit of a sprain, but was sort of prepared for it to be a little bit worse. And his little toesies. Oh, oh. His ouch. Okay, feeling Good up, boy. feeling up the leg here. Good boy. Oh, he's out. Oh, ouch. Ooh, he doesn't like that bit there. When I feel around George's back end, he's very painful on his back left leg, possibly around his ankle, maybe around his knee. It's a bit hard to determine. So what I'm going to do is get him some pain relief and take in some x-rays. Ready, be brave. Okay, be good, George. Here we go. Here we go. Good boy. Okay, let's pop him back in a bed. Make a bed for him. Let's go. Go to bed. X-raying such a tiny animal is always risky, but it's the only way Gerardo can determine if the little kitten has simply sprained his leg or if the injury is something far more serious. Here we go. I'll get you over the tray. Nina and Sam, this is Lily, I think you both know her. Come here, gorgeous. In the UK, Scott is about to investigate a suspected tumour in elderly dog Lily's bladder. Oh, goodness. But he's just noticed something else very worrying. Do you know that's coming from the abdomen? So what we found, unfortunately, is the second mass. The first mass that we knew about is in the bladder. This is a mass on the outside of her body, on her mammary tissue, her breast tissue and it's right near the spot two years ago where I removed her previous breast tumour. So that's quite concerning for me. Scott is now taking a sample of this new lump to find out exactly what he's dealing with. Next, an increasingly worried Scott is moving to the ultrasound on Lily's bladder desperately hoping there's no other hidden surprises. 
there. Yeah. Don't say that now. So just whilst I was doing the ultrasound and could see the what seems like a mass in the bladder, Sam, my head nurse, was able to find, unfortunately, what seems like another mass further up, sort of underneath her armpit. So Nina's just taken a sample of that as well. Scott needs to do urgent x-rays. Okay, x-ray. Things keep getting from bad to worse with Lily. Although her chest is clear of any obvious tumours, as I was turning her, um, I also found another lump on her back. So that's three lumps we've now found. It's going from bad to worse. It's not, it's not great, it's not great. Back on the Gold Coast, vet nurses Patrice and Tiffany are preparing George for an x-ray. Good boy. After he was injured during a friendly play with the family dog. A funny little noise. Good man. Oh, I'm not, not happy. Owners Shannon and Michael aren't the only ones shocked by the dramatic turn of events. Oh, the dog's absolutely devastated. It's been sad all afternoon. Probably just keep them separated for a little bit until George heals up and then hopefully sort of reintroduce them a bit and, and teach the dog to be a bit more calm. Mm, she's gonna love having George back. <laughs> hey George, it's time for your ex mate. Everyone is desperately hoping the kitten has just a simple sprain and not something much more serious. You ready, mate? Are you gonna be brave? What's going on? Gerardo is concerned about the possibility of risky surgery on such a tiny kitten. Why not? Why not? Oh, I hope he doesn't have a little broken <laughs> legs. The last thing you need is a broken leg, George. Yeah, I think he agrees. Mm. I know, it's not fun, is it? Wriggly George will need a sedative for the x-ray. Just a little bit. But controlling the dosage is critical. Too little and the kitten won't stay still enough. But too much could prove fatal. You cheeky. Let me go, and let me know. Because he's so small, you have to give tiny bits at a time. Otherwise, the riskier is we give him too much. Hey? We don't want to do that. OK. Are you right? Let's have a little look now. My little heart's pounding. I might get him some of that oxygen. Put that little... OK, got oxygen on him. There we go, George. Okay. Good boy. Put your little head up here. A little mask for him. OK, here we go. Right. Fire. Look at this. Oh, look. Oh, no mm. wonder it's sore. Poor Good. little fella. No wonder he wasn't happy about you touching that. No, and, and you no know, wonder why he doesn't want to use it. Yeah. George, you're allowed to be in pain, mate. That is pretty much straight down through the bone. Normally it's only one side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a spiral fracture. And the only thing that's keeping it together is his little fibula, a little bone on the side, which is acting like a splint, like his own splint. Poor little matey. Okay, x-ray. In the UK, Scott has discovered a little dog that came in with a suspected bladder tumour also has an additional two lumps on her chest and on her back. The chest is clear of any obvious tumours, but as I was turning her, I also found another lump on her back, so that's three lumps we've now found. Scott's anxious to see the results from the samples taken from the lumps. So how did that third lump look now? Um, that one looked quite fatty, so okay. when I put the stain on it completely washed off the side. Awesome. Um, but the rest is just having a look. Fantastic. Okay, great. Well, so at the moment, I just have to remove the one. The other two look fatty. Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. I can't find any more problems in this dog. Surgery on Lily's suspected bladder tumour can now get underway. Whenever we perform a procedure on any animal, there's always risk, uh, but particularly for an old dog. And then you've got an old dog who previously had had cancer, potentially now has bladder cancer, now has a lump that we found in her mammary tissue. There's quite a lot there to deal with and none of it I like very much. 
So what I've got here is Lily's bladder in my hand. Just having a feel now just to see if I can feel any mass. On the outside of the bladder it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm just about to make an incision into the bladder to see what lies beneath. Because we can anticipate that the mucosa is going to be quite thick. Thankfully after a series of unfortunate finds, this is not bad. So I'm thinking that this looks free of tumours. So I think what we were seeing on ultrasound was actually the, the fat pushing the bladder. It looks like good news for Lily, with no signs of bladder tumour. But Scott wants to delicately take a sample to be absolutely sure. It's a tiny little thing here. You can feel it to just right at the tip of my finger. It's about a pinhead size. It's okay. way smaller than what we would have imagined. Yeah, and that's it right on the end. Yeah. The sample will be sent off for analysis. So I'm just in the process of closing the bladder. And the next step is then removing the mammary mass, which was the same issue that she had a couple of years ago. So now we've taken that sample, we will be sending that away to the pathologist and they'll have a little look and just see it is what we think it is, which is a mast cell tumour. A mast cell tumour is actually one of the most common types of skin tumours that consist of mast cells, which are a type of white blood cell. Now they're found in all types of body tissues and most commonly they form like nodes or masses in the skin, but they can also affect areas of the body like the spleen, the liver, the intestine, or even the bone marrow. So that is that, so really long surgery for little Lily. We've removed one suspect tumour, we've sampled another from her bladder. So now she gets to wake up and then we just have a bit of a wait to see what the pathology shows and hopefully it's good news for her. Alright, let's wake her up. Hey, you did so good. Well done. Lily will have a big sleep after her marathon surgery before going home with Karen. Good girl. Heart rate's a bit high. Mm. We're suggesting he's got pain somewhere. Yeah. Oh, is that sore, is it? Do you feel like you're going to vomit? In Bondi, Kate is trying to work out why Cocker Spaniel Archie has been repeatedly vomiting. So there's something going on in this top part of his tummy. Yeah. So the other thing that we should potentially rule out is that he doesn't have something like a pancreatitis, for yeah. example. Yeah. Right, so pancreatitis is where the pancreas is inflamed. Mm -hmm. um, often it's bacterial in origin. Yeah. And it can make them feel very, very sick. So first things first, let's take some blood off him. Yeah. Right, let's get a pancreatic profile done. Let's do his liver and his kidneys. At the same time, while we're waiting for those, just let's run through some x-rays. Good boy. If he has something stuck. Yeah. Let's not go too far into that. Oh, I know your tummy is sore. <laughs> He's very good at telling you there's something wrong with him, isn't there? <laughs> He's very good at it. It's okay, don't worry. Don't worry, we're gonna look after you. Carolyn is devastated at the possibility of something seriously wrong with her precious boy. Archie has been with me for such a long time. He's been through so much with me as well. And every single time I go through a health scare myself, He's just always there to make everything better. I can see that he's a bit scared and he's nervous and he's in pain. So leaving him at the vet was pretty painful to sort of walk away from him. Good boy. Kate's hoping a blood test will provide some clues about why Archie is so unwell. What have you got for me? So. Coag, APTT and PT are both normal. Okay. But what's abnormal is that we've got some white blood cells here that are high. So either we've got a foreign body stuck yep. or we've got pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Okay, buddy. Legs towards us. Legs towards the wall. The wall? Yeah. One, two, three. Good boy. Next, Kate is going to x-ray Archie's intestine to look for any potential fatal blockages. X-ray. As soon as I take these x-rays, I look at the screen and my heart just drops. This pattern of gas, classic for something stuck. So he's definitely got pancreatitis, right? Something might be setting it up. Ooh. Ooh. See that? Kate asks fellow vet Edwina to confirm her suspicions. Yeah. Do you yep, feel that? Just there. If something is stuck in that intestine, it's death. You never ever let the sun go down on an obstructive foreign body. Kate must now make a difficult call to Archie's owner, Carolyn. Hey Carolyn, how are you? It's Dr Kate. I'm gonna have a chat to her about what she wants to do. Whether she wants to hold on this, whether she wants to leave it 24 hours, see if we get anywhere with just some intravenous fluids, or whether we actually go to surgery now. So I know it's a big, it's big decisions. Do we risk opening him up, not finding anything, or do we actually risk that potentially by tomorrow afternoon that he could be dead? It's at a point where we think, you know what, if he was mine, I'd, I'd probably be bold enough to actually just go in. Carolyn is understandably worried, but agrees to immediate surgery for Archie. Okay, no worries, I'll speak to you soon. Oh boy, mate. a muscle or something. He's got a broken leg. On the Gold Coast, Gerardo has just x-rayed George to find out how badly the tiny kitten has injured his leg. That has got to hurt. Poor little man. They'll need some stabilisation. Patrice, could we set up for bandage, please? Kittens grow rapidly, so George can't be fitted for a cast. Now we're going to apply a bandage to George's leg and that's going to keep that bone in alignment and help it heal faster. And also keep him from putting weight on it because sometimes they heal very quick and it could re-break. We definitely don't want that to happen. Kittens are notoriously hard to bandage. We've got to get at least up to that high. Good idea of splitting it down the middle, hey? His legs are small. If we can keep this bone still for a couple of weeks, a fair chance that his, his fracture might heal pretty quick, like in a fortnight or so. Surely that has to be enough. He is not going to like this bandage when he wakes up. How about you take him back and recover him, and then I'll come through with a cone, hey? George will now spend the next few hours being carefully monitored until the anaesthetic wears off. Here we go. Good boy. Hi, I've got a little bundle of fluff to show you both. An unusual patient has just been dropped off at Scott's Isleworth practice. So this is an unnamed fox cub. Oh my god. <laughs> How magical is he? Receptionist Catherine and vet nurse Natalia are captivated by their enchanting youngster. Oh, so cute. Now the girls want to hug you, so there you go. Yeah. Scott enlists the help of Spanish-born Natalia to name the little fox. What's the word for fox in Spanish? <gasps> is that it? Zorro means fox? Yeah. Oh my god, that's it. There we yeah. go. You like it? I love it. I love it. Oops. <laughs> now many people might not have seen a baby fox before, but they come in the cutest package possible. But this guy, wow. Oh look, we've got you some food. Look, 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 look. He is an absolute stunner. And seriously, I really think he's gonna be quite the lady killer when he gets older. The three-week-old baby fox was orphaned when a dog killed its mother and siblings. Very tragic story. So um, him and his two siblings and his mum were living in a, in a garden and the, the dog got mum um, and she was quite badly injured. 
Luckily, a wildlife rescuer found this one little survivor and brought him straight to Scott. People have very differing views when it comes to foxes. Some see them as vermin, but others see them as a very important and beautiful part of British wildlife. The wonderful thing about foxes in urban areas is that they're actually a, a, a massive part of pest control. You know, rats breed all year round and breed a lot. And if it wasn't for foxes, we'd absolutely be inundated with rats. So maybe we should just have a little look over him. It's always really difficult about treating wildlife is you want to treat them like you would a dog or a cat, but actually yes. you shouldn't because the whole point of being wild is that they you know, want to be fearful of humans to stay away and keep yeah. that separation which actually keeps them safe. If you want to just hold them for me there. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> and let me see your teeth. Good. Have a look at your tummy. Oh, he's got an umbilical hernia. So he's got like an outie. Oh wow. If you leave it, what can happen is the intestine can pop out and then it can get strangulated, um, which can, will lead to his death. So what we'll need to do is to actually correct that hernia. Uh, we'll actually have to stitch it up. Although Zorro urgently needs life-saving surgery, right now he's just too young and fragile to be put under anaesthetic. Come on Zorro, in you go. Zorro will stay with his wildlife carer until he's bigger and strong enough for surgery. Okay, cuddle time over. Get back to work, yeah, you two. Hey, Billy. I'm going to Gap today. We're going to go see all your friends. In Brisbane, Alison has a soft spot for greyhounds after adopting her beloved Billy four years ago from Gap the Greyhound Adoption Program. So a couple of nights before we adopted Billy, I was actually on their website looking at the profiles of all the different greyhounds that were ready for adoption. And I remember coming across Billy's photo and the little write-up and description about him. And I just knew that he was perfect. So Billy's fitted in very, very well to our family. I can't actually imagine ever not having Billy in our life. He's one other family member, one other fur baby. I love you so much. Billy's distinctive green collar means he's undergone extensive retraining and importantly, is now exempt from local muzzling laws. All right, Billy, mummy's gotta go off to work now. You be a good boy, okay? And I'll see you later, good boy. Today, Alison's been invited back to Gap headquarters outside Brisbane to see the latest trainees. Gap's role is to help greyhounds transition from racing dogs to devoted family pets. And today, Alison's meeting up with operations manager, Leah. Alison. Great to see you. You too. I'm very excited to be here. I haven't been here for a few years. Mm -hmm. Brings back a lot of happy memories of my Billy. Leah and her team put retired greyhounds through hours of training so they learn about everyday sights and sounds away from the racetrack. So because greyhounds generally see their kennels and they see the racetrack and the training track and their trainers, they haven't really been exposed to things that you would find in a normal household. So things like microwaves and ceiling fans and children screaming, all of those things we find in a normal household, these dogs haven't been exposed to. So our job is that transition period between race dog and pet dog and we try to expose them to as much as we can and teach them those strategies so that they cope with that in their new homes. So come and have a look. Perfect. They're all congregating up there. <laughs> this is our body awareness yard. So this is where the dogs will hopefully learn that they have four feet and not yes. just two in front of them. So we have the different surfaces. You can see that Bill here, he's working on where it's a little bit rocky. Yeah, good job. We just going to do it gracefully. Good boy. Oh, good job. Good boy. Whoopsie. Oh, wow. So often they're used to the concrete floor potentially in their kennel and the racetrack and their training tracks. But when it comes to tiles or carpet or any sort of different surface, they get a bit worried. Good boy. Good boy. 
interesting. Being in Queensland, we have a lot of high set homes and the dogs often yes. don't know how to go up and down stairs. So we've had these custom built so we can teach them to do that. So you can see with Mako, they move their front feet as far not, as they can, not and then it's like they go, oh, that's all I've got. It's over, yeah, over yeah. straight. So, oh, and then he's just he's shaking. In Bondi, Cocker Spaniel Archie needs urgent surgery after Kate detected something stuck in the sick little dog's intestine. Archie's life will be in serious danger if the blockage isn't removed urgently. When you're doing an X-lap or an exploratory surgery, you never know what you're going to find. We could get in there and we could find a perforated bowel, we could find a whole bunch of stomach contents that are outside the stomach. These can get hectic. The more hands that you have on deck, the better. I like to always go in with two surgeons and be really prepared for these. Can I get a kidney dish? Yeah. So we're just about to open the body wall. It's going to be very interesting to see what we're going to find in here. It takes us a whole of about three minutes to find what the problem is. We found it. It looks like some kind of a tissue. Soft, regular, it's all bunched up in there, but we're about to find out what this is. So, yay to going in. I reckon it's a tissue. Oh, uh, it's, it's white. Yeah. It's, that, it's very that's light. It. Oh, it is it's a, a cob. Oof. Well done, you guys. There was no way that this was going to get through. If this hadn't have come out today, this dog could have been dead tomorrow. Archie will be transferred to a 24-hour hospital for overnight observation while he recovers from the invasive surgery. Good boy. Our part's over, aren't we? They move their front feet as so far not, as they can, not and that. then it's like they go, "Oh, well, that's all I've got." It's over, yeah, over yeah. Stripped. So, And then oh, he's just he's shaking. Yeah. And then he can do it. Oh, that's amazing. Outside Brisbane, Alison is at the headquarters of GAP, the Greyhound Adoption Program. These dogs are learning about life away from the racetrack, so they can hopefully transition to family pets in loving new homes. It's quite common that greyhounds will struggle with stairs simply because they don't have to do it. If they're at the track and they're needed to go up onto something, their trainers will pick them up. How long do they usually stay? We yeah. aim for six weeks. Today, Alison is lending a helping hand. So this is Caesar. He didn't quite pass the first time, so we're That's really hoping right. that he'll do well. It's a very handsome dude. Not very handsome. So yes, we have to assess what sort of athletic injuries they may have sustained. Caesar is a bit of a resident here at GAP. He's gone through a program to make sure that he's ready to do it again. He's A-OK. -okay. During the behaviour modification program, the greyhounds are exposed to different sized dogs and that really is to make sure that they show calm behaviours and control their emotions if they're out on a walk or if they see another owner and a dog on their walk. So we'll get started. Okay, Caesar, good luck. All right, you got it. Caesar, you got this. Let's go. Come on. Here we go, mate. You ready? What a good boy. Good job. Caesar pays little attention to the other dog, so he's passed the first test. So he's really learnt that standing still and calm has given him the right rewards. You're a good boy. So it's really good to see, very, very promising. So we're off to our second test with a smaller dog and see how he goes. You're going to be a good boy, aren't you? Now Caesar will be tried out with small fluffy dog, Olive. So the muzzle's off now and we're going to see how he goes. So far, so good. He did it. But the big test will be when Caesar is off the leash. Okay, come on. Oh, no, no. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I know. 
Your leg feels better in that bandage. On the Gold Coast, seven-week-old kitten George has fully recovered from his anaesthetic, but his broken leg is securely bandaged. Now it's time for him to be reunited with his worried owners. It's time to go home. Hey team, here we have George. Are you gonna come out, say hello? Come out. Come out. Hello, George. Oh. It does look like a big bandage, but he's able to get around with it, so. Oh, that's good. I missed that squeaking all afternoon. Mm, I could hear him coming. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine to go home, have food and things, and just got to keep him quiet for the next couple weeks. If yeah. Up to three weeks, four weeks, uh, should be all healed. Thank okay, you. thanks, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you. So the muzzle's off now, and we're going to see how he goes. You going to go off? Near Brisbane, it's a testing time for a tired greyhound Caesar to see if he's distracted by a small fluffy white dog. Oh! Doing a great job. Just ignoring Olive, which is great. Oh, you're a good boy. Caesar passes with flying colours. Is that the last test? That's the last one. Ah, he's all okay. done. So we'll be able to get him a green collar it's and green send him to time. a new home. We're very proud of you, mate. We're very proud of you. <laughs> Caesar has earned his green collar, awesome. which means he can finally be adopted. Okay. Next, hi. Alison is helping with a health check on Mackie. Oh, hi. So Mackie is quite a special boy. He's such a gentle soul. He's really calm. He loves his cuddles. He actually reminds me a lot of Billy. He's four now though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. You usually would see yeah. some They signs, often yeah. have a bit of pigmentation. That's how Billy quite, started. Yeah, yeah, close to their eyes. Yeah. Mackie has also completed his training and is ready for the final test and then hopefully adoption. So Mackie's going to be assessed with a medium-sized dog called Archie, who's a Kelpie cross. So we'll see how you go. I'm sure you'll be fine. Be a good boy. We're just trying to achieve that that dog understands that it's far more fun and it's more valuable to stay with their owner than it is to rush up to those other dogs. Let's go. You can do it. You'll be fine. Oh, you're a good boy. This is really good to see. He's off leash and he's really calm. Good boy. I love his little white socks. Excellent. So that's um, past the medium. Really good job. Oh, you're a bit spectacular. You, you are a bit spectacular. You're a bit A grade student, aren't you? <laughs> that was a gold star. That is one of the most absolutely rewarding things about this job for myself and for my staff is that we see they come in and they struggle with some things and then we can assist them and we can give them the tools and we can teach them how to be calm and what the appropriate behaviours is and then we end up with a dog that's going to make an amazing pet. It's so rewarding, I just don't know how to describe it. It's fabulous. Okay, so very exciting, Mackie has passed today and we have something very special for him. Will you do the honours? Yes, please. Fabulous, there you go. Well done, Mackie. You got your green colour. Good boy. Good, good boy. Hello, little man. So cute. <laughs> oh, he's got an umbilical hernia. So he's got like an outie. Oh, wow. Six weeks ago at Scott's Isleworth Clinic, a rescue fox was brought in after a dog killed its mother and siblings. Dubbed Zorro, the little orphan had an umbilical hernia, but then was too young for surgery. He's so wriggly compared to last time, isn't he? I know, look, and he's all leggy, isn't he? Is there anything? Oh, say hi. He's going so much. That's the lady that named you. Look, he's got a nose now. Yeah. Oh, no. Where'd this come from? He's got all like teenagery. He's got like, <laughs> like all legs and long face, haven't you? Now Zorro is big enough for anaesthetic and Scott can repair the hernia so he can eventually be released back into the wild. 
Uh, just put him up to two for the moment. Thanks. Yeah. I feel really privileged to do this surgery on Zorro. I love working with wild animals. They're the reason that I was inspired to be a vet in the first place. So I'm more than willing to do my bit to help. If Scott can't repair the hernia, it could be strangulated, which would be fatal for the young fox. See, there's the hole. Oh, wow. It's not small. What we were feeling was this fat, so see like that. So what we were feeling was coming out, but right behind that is intestine. What I'm doing now is basically freshening up the edges of the hernia, and then I'm gonna stitch it together so the hole is no more, and then no longer can any of Zorro's intestinal contents pop out to the outside. Like a thief in the night, you never know. Just like Zorro himself. Hey, do you wanna come and see your boy now? <laughs> There he is. He has grown a lot. I know, look at look at the legs. Yeah. yeah. He's twice his size. You're like a proud mum. Yeah, Zorro. My <laughs> boy. Oh, I love it the way you say it. It's so Zorro. Zorro. Zorro, yeah. Zorro. Yeah. Ah, ah, nice. <laughs> Zorro. It actually sounds a bit more suave. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> You're waking up. Come on, sleepyhead. There we go. Hi, mate. It's okay. You're a good boy. There we go. Hello, mate. Welcome back. The surgery's gone really well without a hitch, and he's been an absolutely perfect patient from start to finish, which I knew he would be. He will make a full recovery, and this is now the first step on the journey to get him back out into nature. Be careful with our precious cargo. Yes. All right. Zorro will live with the other orphaned foxes at a wildlife sanctuary until he's ready to be released. You sleep it off. Good boy. <laughs> and what a change in Archie after he underwent life-saving surgery to remove a corn cob blocking his intestine. His recovery has been like really great. He had to wear like a onesie for quite a few days, which he wasn't that happy about. And he's been healing really well and he's back to his normal self again. Get it on your bed. On your bed. Oh, there it is. Carolyn was terrified of losing her little man, but now she can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I don't even know where he got that corn cup from. I don't even eat corn. <laughs> Where's your toy? You sent your big baby, don't you? He is just always there and he's my best wingman and I just love him to death, yeah. And great news for little Lily. She has survived another cancer scare with nothing sinister detected in any of the lump samples Scott removed. Lily is alive. Her energy is back. Her playfulness is back. Her appetite is back. Oh, what a strong dog. I know you're such a strong girl. Oh, yes, you are so strong. Yes, you are. Owner Karen couldn't be happier, especially as she's now also cancer-free. She's fine. I'm fine. Spring is here. <laughs> you couldn't ask for more. We're extremely grateful. Come on, let's walk. Come on, let's play the ball.